is my absolute pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who is a professor in the Departments of Pathology and Neurological Surgery, director of our neuropathology group, as well as the director of the fellowship training program at the Brain Tumor Center. Um, it is Dr. Ari Perry, and he is going to give us a preview of the WHO 2021 CNS tumor classification scheme. So this is even not even hot off the presses. This is before the presses. So we're really excited to have Ari present today and give us all the updates. So thank you, Ari. You're up next. Listening to Carol, I, I was thinking, Carol, I'm, I'm very sorry for what I'm about to present because a lot has changed or is changing in the upcoming uh, scheme. So all of that work getting to, to the 2016 scheme is now going to be further work, I think, with all the new changes. Um, and it's really not possible to get through it in 15 minutes, but I'll, tr I'll try to give you the 30,000 foot view of what's going on. So probably as many of you know, after the 2016 WHO, we put together a group called See Impact Now. Uh, to publish some updates uh, in between the WHOs because, of course, with molecular pathology, things are moving really rapidly. And now in, in this stood for not officially WHO, which I always thought was a little bit funny because essentially the same people are in this group that also uh, deal with the WHO revisions. And so it probably won't surprise you too much that we accepted nearly all of the recommendations that we made to ourselves. And so I would now call this now officially WHO, but there were seven papers uh, published with updates between the WHOs. So one of the minor things that is changing is that we're now switching to uh, Arabic instead of Roman numerals. And history buffs may think, well, that's because uh, at a certain point, the Arab Caliphate took over some of the territory from the Roman Empire. But no, that's, that's not why. Uh, all the other organ systems in the WHO use Arabic uh, numerals, and it's also less likely to lead to typographical errors. So we're joining the rest of the WHO series in that way. Um, also, instead of WHO grade, uh, this is minor, but it's going to be WHO CNS grade. The WHO itself, you know, made the point that they didn't come up with these grading schemes. It was our group in the CNS um, um, consortium that came up with these grades. And in some cases, they're a little bit different than some of the grading schemes for similar tumors in other organ systems. I think much more significant is this, this next um, item, and that is that there's now going to be similar to other organ systems grading within tumor types. So what do I mean by that? For example, the, ent the entity is astrocytoma, <clears throat> excuse me, IDH mutant, and then you have three choices, grade two, three, or four. Um, and uh, the same thing for oligodendroglioma, IDH mutant, and 1P19Q codeleted, you have a choice of grade two or three. Uh, so this essentially gets rid of the term anaplastic uh, for almost everything except uh, meningiomas where it was kept. Uh, and also notice there's no IDH mutant glioblastoma. So in fact, glioblastoma is now going to be uh, reserved very specifically for the adult IDH wild type uh, of glioblastoma. We're not using it anymore for pediatric type glioblastoma, IDH mutant glioblastomas. And that's because these really are biologically different entities. Another thing that has expanded somewhat is there are now four entities that are grade four by definition. So it doesn't really matter what other histologic features we have for grading, but um, in the IDH wild type GBM, if we have the molecular features, even if it looks lower grade, that's automatically grade four. And there is no more IDH wild type grade two or grade three. Uh, the diffuse midline glioma H3 K27 altered, that was already there as grade four. But now there's a uh, hemispheric glioma that's H3 G34 mutant, also grade four and a pediatric type of high-grade glioma that's both IDH and H3 wild type. 
Uh, with any diagnosis that we make, we can add NOS. So if you're a Fast and Furious uh, movie buff, that's a nitrous oxide system, but in the WHO, it's not otherwise specified. And this is basically code for uh, molecular testing was not done <clears throat> or for some reason was, was not definitive. So if we've, uh, something looks like an oligoastrocytoma, uh, but we don't do any molecular testing, you have to put NOS at the end of that. NEC or NEC, uh, this stands for not elsewhere classified. And these are all uh, of what we have previously called descriptive diagnoses in pathology. So uh, for example, it doesn't fit, I see a tumor and it doesn't fit neatly into a specific category, but I know it's a high-grade glial neoplasm. That's a descriptive diagnosis. I can put NEC at the end of that because you're not going to find an entity called high-grade glial neoplasm in the WHO. So here's kind of a summary of the big changes. So there's 22 new entities that have been added, seven in the glioma category, three glioneuronal, four ependymal, four embryonal, three in the sarcomas, and one in pituitary. And for the first time ever, there is one entity that where the diagnosis can only be made by DNA methylation uh, studies. So that's a little disconcerting. Fortunately, that's a rare entity. There's also 13 uh, entities for which the terminology has been modified in one way or another, sometimes very minor, other, other times a little bit more major, uh, in, in, including one that within the last couple of weeks has been modified a second time. <clears throat> and that's the uh, supertentorial ependymoma that was until previously called relifusion positive. Uh, we've we've uh, learned that it's actually the partner gene that's probably more relevant biologically, uh, and it was called chromosome 11 open reading frame 95. It really wasn't a named gene. Now the gene has been named, so it's going to be the ZFTA fusion positive supertentorial ependymoma when this is uh, finally published in uh, May or June. All right, let's look at uh, big categories like the diffuse gliomas. Here's the 2016 on the left and the 2021 on the right. And notice for the adult tumors, it's actually greatly simplified and there's really only three entities or tumor types. And again, it's partly this way because we're doing the grading within the types. Uh, we've gotten rid of NOS, we've gotten rid of anaplastic, and it's these three major types of tumors. On the other hand, for the pediatric type tumors, this is greatly expanded, and we have now four specific uh, types of pediatric low-grade diffuse gliomas and four pediatric high-grade diffuse gliomas. And we'll talk a little bit about some of those. For the uh, IDH mutant astrocytomas, one of the new uh, features you'll see in the WHO is that for each entity, there are essential diagnostic criteria and desirable diagnostic criteria. And uh, this is a defined as a diffusely infiltrating glioma that uh, either you've ex excluded oligo by doing 1P19Q codeletion testing or uh, more simply, you can do immunohistochemistry looking for ATRX loss. Uh, if you have that, you don't actually need to do the 1P19Q testing. You can stop at ATRX loss, and that's, again, straight from one of the C-Impact Now uh, papers. In terms of grading, um, this hasn't changed too much, and our histologic grading still has a lot of uh, subjectivity and um, problems with reproducibility. Uh, but one thing has been added as a molecular grading criterion, and that is if we see CDKN2A homozygous deletion, that automatically becomes a CNS grade 4. 
and those behave pretty aggressively. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in the oligodendric gliomas, they're, they're not too different than what was uh, there before, uh, ex except again, we're adding uh, as a molecular criterion, homozygous CDK and 2A deletion as a criterion for grade three. That's much less common in the oligodendric allele tumors than in the astrocytic tumors, but it is used now uh, for grading as well. In the glioblastoma that's IDH wild type, typically older adult, uh, it needs to be IDH wild type and H3 wild type. Uh, and then we still have the two histologic criteria for, for calling it grade four microvascular proliferation or necrosis. But again, straight out of the WHO, um, or sorry, the C-IMPACT papers, there's now three molecular criteria that even if the tumor looks lower grade, will classify it as a GBM grade four, and that's TERP promoter mutation, EGFR gene amplification, or a gain of a complete chromosome seven and loss of a chromosome 10. And often we have two or three of these all at the same time. Now I will tell you there's already a cautionary uh, tale that's been published by the French group in neuro-oncology. They looked at these three molecular uh, criteria for uh, GBM and found that at least the, the few cases that look lower grade and, and only have an isolated TERP promoter mutation, they had an overall survival of 88 months. So this may not be quite as, as clear cut as the other two criteria are. Uh, these were mainly needle biopsies, and so they probably are including some things that are not diffuse gliomas, maybe gangliogliomas, pilocytics, DNETs, things like that, or PXAs. Uh, but nevertheless, um, you know, a lot of things, a lot of tumor types inactivate TERT, so it's not limited to just GBM. So in pediatrics, as you know, the genes are completely different, and this is a nice publication from the St. Jude group about the most common genes involved in diffuse gliomas in pediatrics, at least in the low-grade side. Uh, this is the C-IMPACT now paper number four. And this has been slightly simplified for the WHO because these two are biologically related. They're now called the fuse astrocytoma MIB or MIB-L1 altered. And these four are biologically related. This is called the fuse low-grade glioma MAP kinase pathway altered. Both of these ent uh, entities, despite looking like diffuse gliomas, are benign, and so they're WHO grade one. A slight change in the diffuse midline gliomas. Previously, there was only one uh, alteration known for these, and that was the K27M mutation, still by far the most common. But now we know there's two others that are biologically equivalent. One is EGFR gene mutations. Often these are bithalamic tumors, but not always. And occasionally they have superimposed K27M mutation. And the other one is EZIP e overexpression. All three of these, of course, are midline tumors, and all three of them have loss of the uh, trimethylated uh, lysine 27 of histone 3, so we can detect that by immunohistochemistry. And all of these are grade 4 by definition. So here's the, the newcomer, the diffuse hemispheric glioma. It wasn't there in 2016. These are also histone 3 mutant, but instead involve um, the amino acid 34, uh, either guanine to arginine or guanine to valine. Uh, we have monoclonal antibodies for that, so we can pick it up. And we often get clues to these because they are like IDH mutant tumors, often P53 overexpressing and ATRX losing, but don't have OLIC2 expression and of course are IDH wild types. So whenever we see that pattern, we think it's probably a G34 mutant tumor. These have a somewhat intermediate prognosis with an average survival of patients of about two years. For the ependymomas, um, we now need to uh, specify the location of these tumors. 
supratentorial, infratentorial, or spinal. Some of these are defined molecularly, uh, CFT1, YAP1, posterior fossa type A or B. And there's a newcomer in the spinal cord that is fortunately rare but highly aggressive with MICN amplifications. Uh, for the meningiomas, they're still usually defined by histology, but they can also be defined by the driver mutations that we know are really common in meningiomas. In addition to NF2, there's quite a few now listed here. And the grading is essentially the same as it was before, except we've now added TERT promoter mutation and CDKN2A homozygous deletion as automatic criteria for grade three in meningiomas. So you can see molecular alterations are entering more and more into our definitions uh, of entities and grading criteria. The uh, pineal tumors have been elucidated quite a bit since 2016. We now know the pineoblastomas have multiple uh, subgroups. Those with microRNA uh, processing uh, defects uh, usually have a relatively good prognosis. And those with MIC or FOXR2 or RB alterations have a really poor prognosis. The uh, intermediate differentiation uh, pineal parenchymal tumors have this characteristic gene alteration here. And there's a very rare new entity in the pineal called desmoplastic myxoid tumor that is a uh, SMARC-B1 or INI1 uh, mutant. Okay, category of medulloblastoma, as everyone knows, has evolved quite a bit over time. And I think definitely the splitters are winning over the lumpers. So maybe one day it's gonna be like uh, people where every person uh, is their own individual unique subtype. Uh, we're almost headed to the point where every medulloblastoma is its own subtype, but not quite. Uh, but things have expanded out. Fortunately, there's still only a single WINT-activated uh, group, and they're un unique. But uh, in the sonic hedgehog activated, there's now four subgroups with some differences among them. And in the non-WINT, non-sonic hedgehog, there's eight subgroups, as you see here. Um, some of the differences are not that great between the subgroups, but certainly um, still in the sonic hedgehog, the, the most aggressive is the one that has superimposed P53 mutations. And uh, in the group three, group four, or non-WINT, non non-sonic hedgehog, uh, there's multiple subtypes, uh, subgroups. But still, I think the ones that are most aggressive tend to be the ones that are large cell or anaplastic or have MYC amplification. Other CNS and parietal tumors, there's now three subgroups, molecular subgroups for ATRT. And there's a provisional new group, cribiform neuroepithelial tumor that's extremely rare, tends to be intraventricular. Uh, and then there's the um, uh, entities that were described by Dominique Sturm in the 2016 paper on, quote, PNETs, which uh, we, we now no longer have any PNETs. Those, those tumors were added, and there is a new uh, variant of embryonal tumor with multilayered rosettes that's DICER-1 mutated. So I know I threw out a huge amount of information very quickly. Uh, and as I said, there's still a lot more that we could have covered, but I hope this gives you at least an overview of what's coming in the new 2021 WHO. Thank you very much.